Eros has called me and said that sir are you a doctor do you think this is serious do you think we need to land blood pressure reading shows 236 over 118 Hello everyone my name is Anuj I'm a final year MBBS student at Government Medical College Nagpur welcome back to my channel in this video I'll be narrating an incident that happened to me in the flight from Zurich to Abu Dhabi it was a 6 and a half hour long flight and this is one of the most memorable incidences of my entire life welcome to story time and let's begin from the start before we go on to the flight I'll just tell you a bit I was in Europe last month for a few days and the last day in my Europe was scheduled to be the top of Europe that is Jungfrau it was an 11000 feet high mountain the entire group that was traveling with me was already warned that if you are not fit do not come to this mountain but most of us were youngsters we agreed but there was also one indian couple with us the uncle was around 65 aunty was around 55 they also said ki we are going to come to europe only once we have to absolutely see this they boarded the train with us and we we all went to yungfro we enjoyed a very beautiful lunch over there we had enough time to play in the snowfall everything was good but this is where it all starts by it now aunty is good uncle is good i am good everyone is good while coming back aunty said that she is feeling a lot of nausea and she is feeling a lot of vomiting just a sensation i was the only medical student in the group of 40 and i was already traveling solo uh, so for any problems uh, everybody used to just come to me i would just give them any medications which i had so i gave her onensetron after which she felt good it was all good we went to the hotel we were told to pack our bags because tomorrow morning we had a flight at 10 o'clock in the night around 12 hours have passed since we were in the yungfro i go to dinner and only see that uncle is present he is eating his own food alone uh, uncle said that aunty had a very severe bout of vomiting and she is not feeling good i said okay it's perfectly fine so at that point i thought it was just a benign vomiting like we usually have after a lot of bus travel a lot of train travel it could have also been much more severe something like mountain sickness or something but that was not even in my list of differential diagnoses at that point i gave uncle the packet of ors which i had told him that whenever she vomits again you just feed her this she will feel much better because when you vomit a lot of electrolytes are lost so sodium potassium chloride hydrogen ions all are lost that causes a lot of changes in blood ph and everything so in the morning again i came down with my baggage and i noticed that uncle is having breakfast all alone again i said where is auntie where is she is she not feeling good so uncle said again yeah she'll be down here in half an hour but she had another severe bout of vomiting at the night at 3:30 auntie came down and uh, she started talking to me what i noticed in her speech at that point was it had become a little bit slurry what does slurry speech mean anuj uh, well if you want to say hi my name is anuj uh, you would say something like hi my name is anuj there is a difference in my speaking style than normal that is called as slurring of speech it was present but it was not that much so it was just a little bit mild slurring of speech i was like okay might have been some sort of electrolyte imbalances and she told me she had not even taken the ors so i was kind of thinking in the terms of hyponatremia or something right uncle fed her ors she was all good she was able to drink it properly no issues with that he was also telling me she had some sort of pain in her legs and her back was also aching a bit sat in the bus and we went to the airport What we noticed was that she was not able to get up from the seat of her bus. So can you imagine just like one hour ago she was perfectly fine she was able to walk. She had a little bit of slurring but she was now not able to get up from the seat of the bus. Once she was up we could walk her but really not that good. Once inside the airport they ordered a wheelchair. Auntie was sitting comfortably in the wheelchair. She was at the time conscious oriented everything. We were in the check-in phase. We all got a check-in pretty fast and then we went to do the gate part. We boarded the flight. Up until this point I was not really that serious about the situation. because i felt like it was all under control the thing that was really bothering me was the proximal muscle weakness so this is th- these group of muscles which are present are called as proximal muscles uh, and it was bilateral symmetrical so both her hip joints were not able to move properly one hour down the line they start serving something sort of like a lunch and they give out apple juice or champagne or whatever you want you can order that in the flight so i ordered mango juice and uh, uncle auntie also ordered some sort of mango juice what i noticed at that point was that auntie was not able to swallow anything she was not even able to swallow her own saliva so that was a very big huge red flag for me that something has definitely gone wrong up here otherwise up here that means some sort something is wrong with the muscles that is controlling the deglutition process or the swallowing process and that kind of got me thinking in the direction of stroke stroke is a neurological problem that happens due to a vascular cause in short brain mein nas phat jana bolte hain stroke ko and i got really really worried but still there was literally nothing that i could have done at that point auntie was still comfortable the only thing was that she was not able to swallow again one hour passed the Eros has called me and said that sir are you a doctor I said no I am not a doctor might, there might be some person in the plane who is a doctor but there was not so I was the only medical student present in that entire flight there was one dentist which was present with us as well but uh, they called me and said ki you have to take care of these people so what had happened was that auntie was again feeling that bout of vomiting but the big issue was that if she would vomit uh, and her gag reflex is gone it would aspirate it would go into her lungs lungs which would be very very bad we had to control the vomiting somehow thankfully we got it controlled using लॉन्ग तो लॉन्ग एक चीज होती है उसको तुम दांत के पास रख लो तो तुम्हें नौशिया नहीं होता सो थैंकफुली दैट कंट्रोल द वॉमिटिंग इशू बट देन शी वॉन्टेड टू गो टू द वॉशरूम एट दैट पॉइंट वॉट आई ऑल्सो नोटिस वॉज दैट 
the weakness which was present in her legs had increased by quite a lot now she was not even able to stand properly even after we you know held her up so we had to bring the wheelchair and then we take the took the wheelchair near the washroom and she she went and she came back again to her seat on the wheelchair itself now at that point i was completely transitioned from that uh, traveler part to just a full fledged medical student and all the bells inside my mind were ringing like what is wrong what is actually happening at this point so naturally i started doing tests to see whether whether everything is all right with auntie or not i told her to lift her hands like this and uh, to my surprise she could not she could only lift her hands just by this much so only the distal muscles of the hand were fine proximal muscles had gone so again this moment was not here so bilateral proximal upper limb weakness bilateral proximal lower limb weakness this was a classic case of quadriparesis all the four limbs the proximal parts at least are not having enough power i asked her if she has any sort of past medical history of something like this happening is she on antihypertensive medications which she hasn't taken or does she have diabetes or some sort of disease which could explain anything the answer to all was no i just put my hand over the pulse and what i noticed was that it was such a volumic pulse i mean it you could just feel like something just wanted to jump out of that artery right now and the pulse rate was also pretty high the air hostess were very cooperative at that point they repeatedly come and ask me whether she is doing good whether she is doing fine i told her that her bp is definitely hi you should check it but they have some sort of protocol for uh, checking blood pressure because only a doctor can do it or something like that so they did not allow me to check the blood pressure but i could definitely tell that it was it was much more than anything any blood pressure that i had ever seen in a patient so my mind kept on thinking about the causes of quadriparesis and a lot of them came to my mind the first one was obviously stroke or cerebral palsy i was i was really worried because i did not want her to have any sort of stroke or because stroke is something which is you can't really cure it you can't really recover from it that well as you can from other diseases the other disease which actually came to my mind was we went to the top of the mountain so some sort of hypoxic encephalopathy or something really or something like hypertensive encephalopathy came to my mind along with that another mysterious disease was which was present in my mind which kind of presented in the same way bilateral proximal weakness as well as some sort of cranial nerve issues was something called as gulen bar syndrome now you might or might not have heard about this so gulen bar syndrome is a demyelinating polyneuropathy or peripheral radiculopathy at this point which causes your nerves to lose myelin gradually and gradually and that causes you to have weakness in your body. body and that was something which was already in my differential diagnosis the air hostess came to me and asked me do you think this is serious do you think we need to land i was like i'm just a medical student i i'm just making theories of my own i haven't done a proper clinical examination i can't really give you a proper answer to this she was like okay she put me on a phone call with another medical professional i explained them the history i explained them what had happened to her they said that it's going to be all right we are already landing in just 2 hours so don't worry after we get there we'll be able to manage the situation in this time of stress you know my mind just kept on telling me this for the love of god it should not be stroke and that is all i was praying to god at that point ki bhagwan please kuch bhi ho stroke mat lana because i know that stroke is very very difficult to manage it has a it has a lot of morbidity a lot of very very bad consequences and that point i realized that what is the value of a doctor what is the value of a doctor which is on flight he his verdict will determine whether or not the other passengers get to go to their scheduled destination or just to land in some place else at that point i realized the responsibilities i had put on my shoulders by entering this profession at that point i realized that this is the only thing that i want to do for the rest of my life i want to help patients i want to see cases i want to reassure them and i want to get to the diagnosis and treat them adequately at that point i realized what is the value of this one word doctor it is much more than i can physically practically tell you it is something which has to be felt and i felt that uncle was sort of panicking and i had to reassure that everything will be all right we just have to get to abu dhabi and after that we'll manage and if abu dhabi is all right we'll just board a flight to mumbai and we'll go there it, it will be all it will all be all right this sort of reassurance helps a lot because if you lose mentally you also lose physically two hours later we land in abu dhabi the entire flight is empty uh, i am with uncle and aunty we take the wheelchair we take it to the medical officer and the medical as- officer starts asking me history i give the give the complete detail history of whatever has happened she puts on the blood pressure cuff blood pressure reading show was 236 over 118 mm of mercury in right arm supine position that is quite a lot the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80 this is very 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 dangerous the medical officer which was present over there she also talked with me and the first thing that she also thought was something related to stroke or gbs she did the tendon reflexes and i assisted her with that what we noticed was that the tendon reflexes were lost whenever there is a stroke happening you you will notice that every reflex is exaggerated that means you tap your knee there will be three or four movements instead of just one or two you tap your biceps there will be a more stronger contraction than before this meant that she she was suffering from something that was peripheral something that did not involve her central nervous system something that was acute in onset developing over days no sensory deficits proximal muscle weakness 
this was pointing towards a strong diagnosis of Gulen Bar syndrome. My connecting flight to Mumbai in around one and a half hour. I had to go to the custom, the immigration, and all of that. And then the medical officer told me that she's totally unfit to board the next flight. If she boards the next flight, she could actually very well die because it is that dangerous. Even though from Abu Dhabi to Mumbai, it's like a two and a half hour flight. It was that dangerous. In that airport of Abu Dhabi, I saw auntie and uncle for the last time. They thanked me a lot for all the help uh, during the flight, during the course in Zurich and all the things. And I had this huge, huge uh, burden on me. And that burden was, I should absolutely be there with them and not just return to India. But what should, what could I do? All my flights were booked, everything was done. My parents were waiting for me at home. So that was a moral challenge which I faced in my life. Should I stay over here or should I just go back home? Because it is sort of my duty to help them. I took my flight to Mumbai and I just hoped and prayed that everything is good. They took auntie to first go for the neuroimaging, that is CT scan, and to just check whether or not we have any sort of stroke that is happening. Neuroimaging was done. I landed in Mumbai at around three or four in the night. I came outside, I got some network, I, and they had told me that the CT scan which was done had come out completely completely normal. There was no issues with any sort of brain areas in the city. It was all fine. I was very, very relieved that it was not stroke. And just one hour later at around five in the morning, I got a message. They have, di they have made the diagnosis. It is Gulen Bar syndrome. And that put a smile on my face because GBS is something which is treatable. GBS is a disease which is not as severe as stroke. And I see a lot of patients of GBS recover smoothly. And according to the data, around 50% of the people regain their normal activities in about a year, which is very nice to hear compared that to stroke, which is something else entirely. Around three or four weeks have passed since that incident. She has uh, she has had plasma exchange done. She has had injections of IVIG, and she is recovering fully. The moment that she was actually able to talk, that was two days ago. She said, "Was uh, I'm so thankful that Anuj was here with me. He's a very good boy. I just want to say thank you." And uh, uncle just immediately just messaged me, "Kya saasa bola aunty ne?" At that point, uh, I shed a few tears alone in my room. I felt genuinely happy. I felt like I had in some sort helped them, prevented them from boarding the flight, and care of them the way I was supposed to. Even though in a case of CNS, as a med student up in the air, 30,000 feet high, I did not have any sort of help. I did not even have a hammer, a stethoscope to auscultate. I was devoid of tools. The the only thing I could give them was hope. Her progress currently is looking fine and I really hope that this month they get back to India with uncle. In Mumbai when I landed, I got in touch with her son. I explained the entire situation to him. He went to Abu Dhabi the next morning. So what did I learn from this? This was some sort of a bigger experience I think for me. I, I remember when I just heard the diagnosis was GBS, I remember feeling that it was all worth it. All the time that I had spent watching Marrow videos, the time that I had spent reading so many textbooks, all the time that I had spent in the clinics or in the postings, it was all worth it. Because the knowledge which I had, I was able to predict the course, I was not, I did not panic that much, I was able to help uncle and auntie. At that point, it all became worth it. I came back to Nagpur around 6 hours from that, so at around 12 o'clock in the morning, I was in my home. I would especially like to thank the hostesses of the airplane who were super, super cooperative. The medical officer which was present in Abu Dhabi airport. Staff which really helped us take the wheelchair all the way around. And of course to uncle and auntie who were very, very supportive with the people of my group which were present which also helped a lot during the entire process. With that, thank you so much for watching this video. So boy Anuj, I really hope that I was able to add some sort of value to your life today. If I did, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel because it makes up for all the time, effort and energy put into making these videos. Milta next Sunday, 10am. Goodbye.